Norman Seif, uh, a native of South Africa, uh, grew up in a family of physicians. His father was a physician, his brother uh, is, and he uh, uh, trained and was an emergency uh, room physician dealing with trauma care in South Africa before he came to this country some 40 years ago. Uh, he came here to uh, explore the creative side of his brain and, and the uh, well-known designer uh, Bob Cato engaged him to do covers uh, for music uh, albums. Uh, from that, he taught for a year at Bennington College in Vermont, and then Cato also then convinced him to become artistic director for United Artists uh, in Los Angeles. Uh, from that period forward, over some 35 years, he not only had photo shoots with these people that I alluded to before from various disciplines, but more important, built a really remarkable database of millions of feet of film from these shoots and thousands, really, of hours of interviews from those and with other individuals so that he has a composition of the insights and feelings of really great creators of our time. Uh, one of those projects that that led to was a documentary uh, film called Triumph of the Dream. And he engaged uh, with Dr. Uh, Charles Alachi, who is the director of the Jet Propulsion Laboratory at Caltech, in understanding the creativity and drive of the scientists and engineers that put a, a landing, the rover landing vehicle, on Mars. Uh, I just wanted to then conclude and transition into the presentation this evening by writing an excerpt from a letter that Dr. Alachi wrote which said about the film, Triumph of the Dream. It captures the spirit of exploration and innovation better than anything I have seen in my 40-year career. This documentary will be enlightening to anyone who wants to know how exciting it is to explore. And I hope that you will be able to share it with a much wider audience. Please welcome Norman Seif. First of all, this is genuinely an honor. And um, in my work, it's always an honor because you have that opportunity to engage in a relationship with another human being and the depth of the relationship is a choice that we make when we work together, how deep we want to go. And what I found in my work is it was not about aiming at a goal. Um, it was not about trying to make a photograph. It was not trying to, about lighting someone. Uh, basically, uh, and, and let me just back it up, I never had any uh, formal artistic training, uh, but what I did in, in terms of the training side is I learned a very simple, here are the two lights that I want, here's the angle of the light, give me a camera, I have a three or four people, load cameras, set the readings, and now I'm free to engage with the artist. So the engagement is the art form. And it's about relationship, it's about emotional honesty, it's about being in the moment, present with somebody. And basically the way I describe it now is what I do is create this safe relationship with, with artists who then feel in return the, the willingness to let go of defenses. And so we end up in a relationship which is basically how emotionally and honestly intimate can we become in that three hours that I have with an artist? So that was scary to me. I came out of medicine um, in those days, the uh, unspoken, but the idea was whatever you do, do not engage with your patients emotionally because you won't be able to be objective. And there was something wrong about that. I didn't have the language uh, to understand why it didn't feel good, but when I uh, relinquished my career and I came to the States and began the photography process after the first short period of just realizing that I didn't have to focus on the technicality of photography, the focus was on the nature of interaction and relationship, I realized that I did not have the tools to have a relationship. I did not have an understanding of what the spectrum 
of emotions are because basically what I was discovering that communication, uh, real communication is emotion based. So here I'm coming from one discipline that says throw emotions out the door and I'm stepping in another one and I'm basically, um, there's a word for it, um, I, I might have to come back to it but uh, the point is I didn't really have the tools to do what I needed to do. So what happened in the first phase of my career is I would step out, suddenly I'm dealing with some icon who I had followed almost as a kid and now I'm there with them six feet away and I go into terror. And so for the first four or five years at the, at the beginning of every session I was dealing with my fear and doing the best I could to hide the fear. And um, things you know, didn't feel good. I, I had a lot of judgments about the fact that I was scared. I had, a, as we all do, a manual about every emotion, you know, what's good, what's bad, what's weak, what's male, what's female. Um, and I realized I had to work with the manual. I had to change the beliefs that were around emotions. So the first set of beliefs I had about fear was one that meant that you were not creative because obviously highly creative people are, you know, are confident, um, illiterate is the word. I was emotionally illiterate. <laughs> Nonlinear thinking, that's a big part of the new paradigm. Um, so anyway, um, what, what really happened for me was I realized that the work that I had to do as an artist was to learn to, uh, first of all, f know what I was feeling and feel them. And then I also needed to be able to be vulnerable enough to express what I was feeling outwardly. Um, the first phase, as I was telling Bob today, um, was many, many years where I was thinking, what's wrong with me? Why am I not as apparently spontaneous and, and just carefree as they were? Um, and then what happened is I learned to stop the judgments and drop that component of how you suppress your emotions. And uh, one day I just said to an artist, you know, I don't know where I'm going, I'm shit scared, but, you know, here we are. And the artist looked at me and said, wow, you know, thank you so much, I'm scared as well. And I realized that the relationship had now moved into intimacy and trust. So what I began to learn was if I wanted to get to a particular goal, and the goal was how can I have, how can I create spontaneously real um, uh, images that are authentic and have a vitality about them. The challenge for me was that I had to develop a, vi a vital real relationship with people, and then the idea was if I can create that kind of relationship and that kind of vitality, Really, all I'm doing is documenting the experience. I'm not there trying to make photographs. I'm not, it's not about composing. It's not about aiming at anything. It's about a moment-by-moment -moment experience as you travel together in a relationship. So um, that was the work. It was the, the, a surprise to me. It was not about learning. And, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not knocking going to art school or, or photography school and learning the technique. What I do say is you probably can get what you need in a couple of months. After that, if you're going to be working with people, it's about relationship skills. And the relationship skill is basically with yourself. And that is, what am I feeling? Am I uh, honestly able to communicate who I am and how I'm feeling? And when you do that, basically what comes back is trust. And the people that I would work with would they, we, we, we don't just pick up with our senses. We pick up a sense of other people. We have other, some people call them non-familiar senses, and those are real for me. So as I learned, okay, what am I seeing, what am I hearing, but there's something beyond that. I realized I could get a feeling and a sense of people, and if it doesn't feel safe, there's something wrong. And uh, generally, the something wrong was that I was not being real. So that was the, the process, and ultimately I'm going to just jump over here. But what became very clear to me was that uh, I was shifting from goal orientation to process orientation and allowing events to unfold without trying to dominate them. So that's another piece of what we're now talking about is the paradigm shift in creativity. There is, 
as far as I'm concerned right now, a monumental shift going on in society. And uh, there are a lot of problems that we, we, we just don't know how to solve in a, in a linear sense. Um, I believe that we are going to um, survive. I believe we're going to thrive. I think it's going to happen through quantum leaps of creative insight. So that's one of the other things that I started to discover as I'm working with this particular echelon of successful creators across the board, uh, actors, writers, directors, musicians, I started taking the attention of how am I doing to, wow, what a wonderful journey, what a wonderful adventure and an opportunity I have to discover by working with these people what makes them successful. And out of that, what can we learn and what can we bring into our own lives by watching what I would call um, those who work at the higher reaches of human creative potential, why are they successful? What secret ingredient do they have that we don't have? And the secret to that is that they don't have any secret ingredients. They have the same inner resources that we have. They have the same spectrum of emotions. They have the same qualities like courage and perseverance and conviction and f fear is a power. It's not something you want to get rid of. It's a guidance system. It tells you generally, it, and like all emotions, it's a duality. Every emotion has a negative face potentially and a positive face. So fear can be neurotic fear that paralyzes you, but it can also be a guidance system that says go right this way where you don't want to go because that's where the magic is. So in the beginning when I started uh, going, I've got to get rid of fear so I can be creative, that was taking me down a road of numbing out what was going on. As I learned that, wait a minute, here is a, a, a capacity to discern that we need to use. Every single artist needs to have a, a sense of the spectrum of emotions and be willing to go there. If they're not willing to go there, they are going to numb themselves out from inner experience. And Creation begins at the inner level. It's not an outer process. It begins in the mind, as, as we say here, and you'll see on the film, uh, all creation begins in the mind as a dream. And by dream, I mean uh, capital D, what we can envision for ourselves in the future. And it begins in the mind, in the imagination. And I have a 23-year-old son um, who came back from South Africa. I don't live there. I live in... Um, uh, LA, but he went to study African music, and um, he's wonderful because when he looks at stuff that I'm doing, he asks me some really direct questions. So when I said to him one day, I was showing him some stuff, and I said, you know, all creation begins in the mind as a dream, and he said, Dad, everyone knows that. <laughs> so, so I realized that I had to add a little to it, and so when I say the mind now, what I'm talking about is the multi-dimensional mind, and we all have a, a multi-dimensional mind. We have a subconscious that contains every experience we've ever had is stored in the subconscious, and we only access, like a library, when we need it, we go and pull out what we need. So uh, the unconscious mind is more vast than the conscious mind. And then we have an, uh, a, sorry, subconscious. Subconscious is where you, you, you hold memory. Unconscious holds a lot of intuitive and archetypal patterns, and it's, it's uh, boundless, it's so huge. The conscious mind is really a small part of who we really are. There's a lovely statement that one of the people that I work with uh, talk about, and they say, we are more of, who we, of, of, of what we don't know than what we do know. The consciousness of, that we are aware of is a small part of who we really are. So, um, one of the things that I'm, I have to uh, uh, shorten here, because I can go off in a tangent here, but one of the things that I found, and thanks to my son, I can say that the artists that I work with access the multidimensional mind. You will see a lot of people accessing the subconscious and the unconscious, and they talk about, well, I don't know, I was just about to go to sleep, and suddenly there's the, the whole revelation all in one go. So it's not a linear process. It's a quantum leap of revelation. 
Uh, and as you read the literature and as you see from some of the people that I'm working with, and I've, you know, we've done hundreds and hundreds of shoots, this is the norm. The, the artists basically who are innovative artists have these intuitive sudden breakthroughs and then they bring in the technicality of the linear process to, to bring it from creation in the mind to manifestation in the physical realm. Most people think, oh, the manifestation is the art, but it's not, it's process. And it's what the individual artist is experiencing and they are trying to create some outer world rendition of what they experience. So uh, the other just last point on fear is if you're gonna be innovative, um, you have to go somewhere you've never been before, otherwise someone said you become a tourist. If you're gonna just repeat what you've done before, you've been there before, so um, by definition, if you're standing on the edge of the unknown and you've never been there before, you better be scared because um, you, know, it, you don't know what the answer is and having a healthy sense of fear will help you discern when the time to jump and when the time to say, I'm not quite ready, I need to uh, do a little bit more reflection. Uh, is this the dream I really want? Uh, what are the obstacles to my dream? And when would be the time to jump prudently? But it's, a, it's the most profound moment for the artist to know when to go. And there's one other secret to that is that you never have all the answers. So at some point, you have to make the decision to go even though you don't have all the answers. So you have some organizations that are saying, well, you know, we're not gonna move forward until you know, we have all the answers and we understand perfectly what's gonna happen they will stay uh, in, a, uh, in, a, in a stasis. And then there are other people that go, oh, I'm just ready to go, you know, I wanna be the rock star, get a guitar, and I'm gonna step out on stage. They're not, they're not ready either. They need to do a little bit of, uh, of the learning process. So very quickly now, just to say, as a result of all of these kinds of questions and all of these kinds of personal experience, and the experience of now talking to artists who are now saying, that's exactly how it works for me. Um, I began to get the idea that my particular way of working was not just my way of working, that maybe there was an archetypal pattern there that seemed to be true for everybody who was involved in innovative creativity. It all begins in the mind, in the imagination, the multidimensional mind, thank you Shane, uh, and then what comes up is the objection to, to the idea. Well, why won't I be able to create this idea? What will be in the way? And the objection is very, very important because it's both emotional and outward uh, challenges. So the emotional part of it is artists have a lot of doubt. They know that they're going to jump into unknown territory and the fear can be uh, a, uh, the cause of, of creative paralysis. On the, on the technical side, as you may look at with, when the scientists are wanting to put their uh, rovers up on Mars, they have to fundraise. You know, how can I get the people? How can we finish this in the time? How can I uh, get uh, NASA, whoever's gonna fund this particular mission to give us the mission? So there's fear around achieving what is necessary to move on. So this started giving me the concept that there, there is a staged cascade of uh, uh, steps that are common to all, all creative disciplines. So the idea of the seven stages of the creative process came up. Uh, we've got material to um, show those particular stages as a living experience, not as a nice philosophical academic theory. It's not a theory of creativity. It's basically about the steps of uh, how you start off with a dream and the steps that you go through to a turning point until you commit to the dream and you end up with the fulfillment of the dream or the triumph of the dream. And triumph of the dream, uh, which unfortunately will only show you the first 20 minutes. I'm so sorry, our time doesn't allow the whole movie. Uh, but it, it was based on, the whole film is based on the seven stages of the creative process as the narrative structure of the film. And then the last thing I would like to say, and then we can get started, is um, I have held this material off the marketplace now for 35 years 
with a lot of people saying, come on, come on, come on, it's just your fear that's in the way, get the F out. Um, and um, I, I, uh, I realized some of it was my fear, but I also realized that there was a maturing project that is a multi-platform project. It's photography, which uh, started everything, allowed me to get these amazing people in a room for three hours, uh, and they just mine, and I can engage, and we can play all these wonderful, emotional, uh, intimate uh, interactions. And uh, then I had the chance to talk about creativity, and then in 1975, I decided to bring a film crew in and film the first uh, session. And since then, we have kept filming. We have millions of feet of film, and I have not really allowed that to be public yet because I wanted all the different dimensions of the creative process to unfold. So those dimensions include the paradigm shift, the inner resources, the seven stages of the creative process, which we believe, and I have people who work with me, can be very empowering individually and very empowering for organizations, whether they're corporations or uh, educational, but the idea is we ha all have access to the same inner resources, we just need to know how to learn to use them. So uh, the first part, which are little clips from uh, sessions, mainly with, I think, I think they're all musicians. Sessions last about an hour. What I've done is I've pulled about five minutes on each artist just to give you a sense of the feel uh, at some point, some of them you'll see there is a turning point, and then what we'll do after that, there's a, that's about 20 minutes, uh, we'll, uh, I'll come up, I'll tell you a little bit about Triumph of the Dream, we'll show you the beginning of Triumph of the Dream, and then I'd love to have uh, an exchange with everyone here um, uh, for the next uh, short period, and then we will end, up, end off on a very short uh, little uh, animation of some stills. So, uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm wanting to feel the energy of you guys, and it just it feels like an absolute pleasure to be here. And sorry, I wasn't looking up there, but now I am. Okay, <laughs> thanks. Thank you.